Okay, this video is about rational functions and crossing the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so what happens sometimes is that the curve will cross that asymptote. And I'll show you what I mean. First of all, remember vertical asymptotes will never be cro crossed by the function. Never, 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 never. You can count on that. Horizontal asymptotes are sometimes crossed by the function. Well, how do you know? Well, I'm going to show you how you test it to find out. Okay? You set the horizontal asymptote that you found using Bobby Obotno HTC, set that equal to the, the function. If you can solve it, then that's the point that the horizontal asymptote in, intersects the line. If it cannot be solved, then the function does not cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay, let that soak in, write it down, and let's do some examples. All right, so look at this. So what we're really concerned about is the horizontal asymptote right now. So let's just start there for now. If I look at this, Bobby Obotno eats DC. Well, there is no X on top, right? But there is an X at the bottom, so it's big on bottom. So that's Bobby O. And that means the horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. So now Y equals zero. So I set zero and set it equal to the function. And I'm going to cross multiply. Put the zero over one, cross multiply. So I get zero equals negative three. Well, that's not equal, so that means it does not cross. Let's look at this one over here. Horizontal asymptote. Bobby Obotno eats TC. Well, the exponents, highest exponents, are the same, so I need to uh, divide the coefficient. So it's 3 over 1, so y equals 3. So I'm going to take that 3 and set it equal to the function that I have. and solve it for x. Well, I'm going to just cross multiply. So 3 times 3 squared plus 3 equals 3 squared plus 11. All right, distribute that. I got a 3x squared on both sides. They cancel each other out. And then I have the statement that says 9 equals 11. Well, you and I know that's not correct. So that means it does not exist or it does not cross. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it doesn't cross. So let's do some that do. All right, let's look at this. <clears throat> I'm given a rational. I need to run through these things. Now, remember, we're not going to use x-intercepts. We're going to talk about roots. Use the word roots instead. But holes. How do I know if there's a hole? Factor the top and the bottom first. So if I factor it, I have x plus 3 over x plus 5 times x minus 4. So there is no hole, no common factors, so I say none. Now, roots, um, remember with roots, you just take the numerator and set it equal to 0. So x is negative 3. Vertical asymptote, set the bottom factors equal to 0. x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, x is negative 5, x is positive 4. So I have two vertical asymptotes at negative 5 and 4. Horizontal asymptote. So Bobby Obotno eats DC. All right. Look at the power when it was all in standard form over here. x to the first on top, x squared on bottom. So that's big on bottom. Big on bottom, y equals 0. So it's a y equals 0. And then I need to decide, does it cross the horizontal asymptote? So I set the function equal to 0. And I'm going to set it back in, in standard form and cross multiply. Right? If I do that, I get 0 equals x plus 3. Well, I can solve this for x. I get negative 3 equals x. Okay. That means that it does cross. And where does it cross? Well, where x is negative 3 and where y is the 0, that's the asymptote. So it does cross at, what did I say, at negative 3, 0. y-intercept, remember, I'm going to put in zeros everywhere there's an x. So if I do that, 0 plus 3 is 3 over 0 plus 5 is 5 times 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So I get 3 over negative 20. So 0 
to negative 320. It's a very tiny number, but it's negative. Now, when I go to graph this, let's put in what you know. Vertical asymptotes at negative 5 and at positive 4. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Root at negative 3, 0. I don't have any holes. It crosses at negative 3, 0. Okay, that is my root. That's where it crosses the asymptote. The y-intercept is at 0, negative 3, 20. So it's just below. Now, one thing we haven't talked about, but notice there's three sections to our graph. If you have two asymptotes, it creates a middle section. In the middle section, you're either going to have a parabola or you're going to have a cubic just depends on what the graph is doing. So you look at the hints. We know the curve has to go here and it has to go through here. So if it crosses here, it's crossing, we already said it's going to cross. That means it curves up and that's created a cubic function. There it is. Now I need to find out what's going on on the left and the right still. So I'm going to pick a value over here. X is negative 6. So if x is negative 6, I need to plug negative 6 into my equation. And I get negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3 over negative 6 squared is 36 minus 6 minus 20. So it's a negative 3 over 10. So at negative 6, I'm at negative 3 tenths. So I'm down here. And I know the curve is going to hug the asymptotes here. It's not going to cross because we already found where it crosses. What about over here? Well, this is where x is 5. Let's try where x is 5. Let's do the same thing. x plus 3, 5 plus 3 is 8, over 5 squared, which is 25, minus, or plus 5, minus 20. Well, that's 30 minus 20, which is 10, so that's 8 tenths, but it's positive. So over here, that means it's above the horizontal asymptote, and it's doing this guy. All right. It's a lot of work, but you can see how it all makes the picture work out. All right, let's try this one. Um, this one, if I just factor it, I get x minus 4 times x plus 4, but that just tells me there's no holes, so I'm done with that. So I just say no, all right? X-intercepts. Well, you set the top equal to 0 to solve it. So this are roots. Remember, we're calling them roots. And if I do that, I get 5. 6 when I divide. So at 5, 6, 0, there's a root. So just less than 1. Vertical asymptote, I need to use my factored form here. So I do x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0. So I have a vertical asymptote at 4 and a vertical asymptote at negative 4. Horizontal asymptote, Fabio Botno eats DC. Okay. Look at the exponents. Top is a 1, the bottom is a 2. That means it's a Bobbio. Big on bottom, so y equals 0. Now I need to decide, does it cross the asymptote? Well, y equals 0, so 0 equals 6x minus 5 over x squared minus 16. If I cross multiply, that's 0 equals 6x plus 5. Well, if you solve this, you get negative 5. I'm sorry, 6x minus 5. Uh, add 5 to both sides, so I get 5 equals 6x, divide by 6, and looks like our x is 5 6 and the y is 0. If you notice, that's our root. It's the same point. Sometimes that works out like that, sometimes it doesn't, so don't bank on it always being that easy. Y-intercept is last, okay, uh, let's do this right here. Y-intercept, I take a 0 and I put it in the top or any place there is an x. So 6 times 0 minus 5 over 0 squared minus 16. That gives me a negative 5 over negative 16, which is, makes a positive. So 0 and 5 sixteenths. OK, I found all these pieces of the puzzle. Let's put it together. 1, 2, 3, 4, asymptote here. 1, 2, 3, 4, asymptote here. 5, 6, 0. So that's not quite at 1. But that's where it goes. All right. Uh, horizontal asymptote at 
zero. It's right there. And crossing the horizontal asymptote, yes, we said it's the same point as our root. And where does it cross the x-axis? Well, at zero and five sixteenths, that's just above the asymptote. So that means it's going to be a cubic. It's going to curve above. It's not bouncing off, it's going above it. So again, I need to do a little t-table to figure out what's going on on the left and the right of my graph. So if I pick a point over here at negative five, plug it in. Negative five times six is negative 30 minus five over negative five squared is 25 minus 16. Negative 30 minus five is negative 35 and over nine. Well, the bottom line is it's negative. So that tells me the curve is down here. Okay, and if I pick a point over here on the right side at positive five, that gives me five times six is 30 minus five over, same idea. This time I have a positive five, 25 over 16. So it's positive, so my curve is above the horizontal asymptote. All right, hope you can follow that. Okay, you try this one on your own, and we'll see you in class. See how you did. Good luck.